Hey, the internet, that's what they're worried about. They're worried about the, the latest phones. That's what they're talking about because that's what we have given to them. It's our responsibility. That's what they have seen. We did not show them the haqeeqat of Al-Quran al Kareem. You know, recently I was bimar, had a lot of bukhar, and the, the favorite dish that I used to eat, I couldn't eat it. I didn't like it. Was that that the person who cooked it was a different person or same person? Was the dish different? No, it was the same dish, same food. But I couldn't eat it. Why? I was ill. I was bimar. The dish was the same. Why doesn't Quran benefit me? I heard the people recite the Quran and they start crying. I heard the people fall unconscious when they recite the Quran. I see that the Quran mentions that the people of Allah, they start shedding tears when they recite the Quran. Why doesn't it happen to me? The sickness is in you. The Quran is the same. We have Imar. There's a problem in us. And this is the month of training to get rid of that sickness. To cure ourselves from this disease. Hmm? And when we work on that, when we work on our children, inshallah, you will see they will fall in love with Al Quran Al Karim. They would want you to recite Al Quran. They will recite Al Quran Al Karim with you. So, point number two, and then point number three, to believe that it is with the Father of Allah. Everything happens with the Father of Allah. What if Allah doesn't accept my song? Don't boast about your fasting. Don't say I didn't eat anything in Sahur all day, then talking to people. I oh, today I didn't eat anything. I did not eat anything all day, and I'm still fasting. No. And don't expect that it will be accepted because of your efforts. If, if it is accepted, it will be accepted with the Fadl of Allah Jalla wa'ala. With the Karam of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And point number four, that is Tazkiyah. Tazkiyah of the mind, Tazkiyah of the heart, and controlling your nafs. Point number five, perfection in ibadat, in salah, in wuzu, in citation of Quran, tarabi, thinking about mahshar. Point number six, sila rahim. Very important. As I said, nothing is accepted if your family members, if your relatives are naraz with you. Nothing is accepted. You go to them and you seek forgiveness. Point number seven, tilawat of Quran, hips of Quran, and memorization of Salah. Translation. Memorization of Salah translation. Point number eight, the root upon the Prophet wasallam, istighfar, zikr pasir and fast. Point number nine, is dawah of deen and gratitude. Point number ten, Ihsas of masakin, feeling the pain of the masakin, of the poor people. And to thank Allah for every ni'mah, before you eat, before you drink, you thank Allah Jalla wa'ala. Point number 11, eat with family members. Eat together, eat less, do not waste your food. Point number 12, is to see, visit the bimar people, bimar kursi, visit the marid, and especially those who are on the deathbed. That gives you so much yaqeen and so much shukr, it creates a sense of gratitude in your heart. If you go to the hospital and you make a habit of meeting people, there's a 25 year old young person there, he's on his deathbed and you speak to him and you say, how do you see life now? And he says to you, five months ago it was all different for me. Five months ago I was planning for the future. Five months ago I used to think about the cars, I used to think about my properties, my house, my luxury, my dunya, my degree, my university. I used to worry about my six pack. There's some people, this, they, they would come to me, peace up, give me a taweez. You know, so I can get a six pack. Yeah, what kind of a life is this? Yeah? I've been trying so much in the gym. I've, I've tried everything. But it's not working. It's not happening for me. Inna lillahi wa inna ilihi rajiwa. You know, I just remember, this is, this is the state the Ummah is in. This is our state now. People waste so much time in the gym. People stand in front of the mirror for so many hours. Why? Why? Why are you wasting your time? People are worried about the, the height. Is that the maqsad of our life? Is that the purpose of our life? It is to attain taqwa. It is to attain taqwa. You go to the hospital and you see a person. 25 years old, your age probably, you know, 20, whatever your age is. And then he tells you, five months ago I was planning my life, my plan, my, my motive, my maqsad was totally different. Today, how do you see dunya? He says, when I look out of this window, when I look at this dunya, it has no meaning to me. It has nothing, because I know I'm about to leave this dunya. You know when you talk to him, when you speak to that person, such a person was about to leave dunya, then if you were to ask him, what is it that you want in life? Do you know what he would want? He would say, if, if only I could get one year in my life, one more year. 
Huh? One year of your life, one more year could live. You know when you meet a person like that, and then when you come out of the hospital, and then you look at yourself, Ya Allah, I used to cry over Pesa, I used to cry over my Karobar, I used to cry over the way I look, and the way that my studies, my grades, my... Ya Allah, I used to worry about so many things. At least you have blessed me with this beautiful life. What I have, this guy is dying to have that. This guy is begging to have that. That is something that will create true gratitude in your heart. True shukr in your heart. That's why I say, go to the graveyards, go to the kabristan, go to the, to the hospitals, meet people who are on the deathbed. And we begin with this in the month of Ramadan. Huh? We begin with this in the month of Ramadan. These were the, the 12 points. Allah Jalla wa'ala mentions, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, O believers. Now, Iman is very important for Ramadan. To benefit from the month of Ramadan, the most important thing is Iman. And brothers, if you look at Ramadan and fasting, Ramadan is all about Iman. Everything in Iman is in Ramadan. Everything, what is in Iman? آمنت بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والقدر خيره وشره من الله تعالى والبعث بعد الموت. These are the necessary six points of iman. Let me recite the the famous hadith which is known as أم السنة. أم السنة. ها؟ We have أم القرآن. What is أم القرآن? سورة فاتحة. The way سورة فاتحة is أم القرآن. There is Umm Sunnah. What is Umm Sunnah? An Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Qal baynama nahnu inda Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam zaata yawm in zaata la'a alayna rajulun shadeedu bayadi al-siyaz. Shadeedu al-sawad al-shaar. La yura'a alayhi asru al-safr wa la ya'rifuhu minna ahadun. Hatta jalasa ila al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa asnada rukbatayhi ila rukbatayhi wa bada'a kaffayhi ala fakhidayhi wa qala ya Muhammad akhbirni an al-Islam. Fa qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. الإسلام وأن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتسوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطعت إليه السبيل قال صدقت فعجبنا له يسأله ويسدقه قال فأخبرني عن الإيمان قال أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره قال صدقت now, this incident happened in the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates this hadith. He said, we were with the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And suddenly a man appeared. And he was wearing white clothes. And his beard was dark. And apparently there were no apparent signs of journey on his clothes. Meaning there was no dust, there is no wubar. He's someone that we couldn't recognize, we didn't know him. You could tell that he has come from a distant place. But his clothes were white, his beard was black, and there were no apparent signs of journey. We could not see apparent signs of suffering. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, this person comes and he sits in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how does he sit? The way we sit in the shahud. The way we sit in the shahud, that's how he was sitting. And his knees were touching the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he had his hands on his thighs. And he says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he speaks to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is Iman? What is Iman? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iman is that you believe in Allah, you believe in His books, His angels, his messengers, you believe in the destiny and you believe in the hereafter. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, when he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered his question, he said, you have told the truth. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, we were surprised for ajib. He said, we were surprised, ajib, what a strange thing. He's asking a question and then he's confirming that you've told the truth. It's not a wrong answer. You're asking a question and then you're saying true. What you said is right. He then says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh, the most praised one. What is Islam? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then responded, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Islam is 
that shahada an la ilaha illallah wa shahada anna muhammad nabduhu wa rasooluh and you establish your salah and give zakat and you fast in the month of Ramadan he said that's true what you said is correct it's not wrong you didn't make a mistake what you said is true is correct Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala said we are surprised he's asking you a question and then saying you're correct and then he said what is ihsas ya muhammad what is ihsas the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said ihsan is you worship Allah as though you can see Allah. And if you can't gain that state, then to believe that He can see you. He is watching you. Remember the first point, huh? First point of Ramadan, of Taqwa. Then He said, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Akhbirni an isa'a, tell me about the day of judgment. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the one being questioned doesn't know more than the questioner. Then he said, ask them, tell me about the signs of the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned the signs of the Day of Judgment. And then this person left. After he left from there, Rasulullah ﷺ said, O oh, Umar, do you know who this person was? Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, Allah wa Rasulullah. Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa they know best. The Prophet ﷺ said, that was Jibreel. This was the angel Jibreel. And he came to teach you the deen. Not to teach Rasulullah He came to teach you the deen. Huh? It was Jibreel who came in the form of a human. White clothes, black beard. Sat right next to the Prophet And what was the teaching of Jibreel? What did he teach? You know the first thing he taught? The Sahaba The leader of all the Malaika is teaching the Sahaba how to sit in the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How to sit in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting and he actually sat in the state of tashahud, placing his hands on his thighs. And his thighs touching Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He came to teach you. Now what did he come to teach? What did he say? It is Al-Ihsan. Remember Al-Ihsan is tasawwuf. What is Al-Ihsan? Tasawwuf. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the word Al-Ihsan was used. Tasawwuf wasn't used in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Al-Ihsan. Meaning Tasawwuf existed. The reality of Tasawwuf existed in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is Tasawwuf? Tasawwuf is to see Allah. What is the goal of Qanzul Huda? With Iman Ikhlas, Ilam Amal Dawah Khidmat Ikhat, we will support ourselves and all of humanity to attain the Ma'rifah of Allah. And the Ma'rifah is Irfan. Irfan is to know Allah Jalla wa'ala, to see Allah Jalla wa'ala, to gain the Qurba of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Hmm? That is Ma'rifah of Allah Jalla wa'ala. That is Tasawwuf. Tasawwuf is Ma'rifah. So Tasawwuf existed without this name. The reality of Tasawwuf existed. Tasawwuf the reality of tasawwuf existed without a name. Now the name exists without the reality. Hmm? In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the reality of tasawwuf existed without a name. Now the name exists without the reality of tasawwuf. It's all the name of tasawwuf, isn't it? So al ihsan. What is al ihsan? Ihsan is connected. To song. It's all about fasting is all about Al Ihsan. How? As I said, what is Iman? Sallallahu ala Muhammadin in Nabi Yumi wa ala alihi wa sahbi yubarik wa salimu salli ali. Motor mahiba atka khususi birth aap note ka lijiye. Jesa ki har transmission ke baad is khususi transmission me har lecture ke baad ایک خاص ورد آپ کو دیا جاتا ہے تو آج کا ورد برے خیالات سے بچنے اور شیطانی وساوس سے بچنے کے لیے اگر آپ کو برے خیالات آتے ہیں یا شیطان دل میں بار بار وسوسے پیدا کر رہا ہے تو برے خیالات اور وسوسوں سے بچنے کے لیے آج کا خاص وظیفہ آپ نوٹ کر لیجئے ہر روز رات سونے سے قبل تین مرتبہ لا حول ولا قوت الا باللہ العلی العظیم یہ تین مرتبہ پڑھ لیجئے اور اس کے بعد ایک مرتبہ اللہم یا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبی على دینک اللہم یا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبی على دینک اللہم یا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبی على دینک اگر آپ یہ پڑھ لیں گے تو انشاءاللہ اس کی برکت سے 
اللہ جل و آپ کو ہر قسم کے وساوس اور برے خیالات سے محفوظ فرمائے گا صلی اللہ علیہ محمد نبی المی و علیہ و صحبی وبارک وسلم وسلم علیہ Brothers and sisters in Islam, if you can take note of today's special litany, the special will that we give after every lecture, it is to purify your heart from satanic whispers. So if you feel that you, you're always suffering from satanic whispers and Satan creates different kinds of whispers in your mind and in your heart, inshallah, if you make niyyah of reciting this every day, before you go to sleep, you recite, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. Every night before going to sleep, you recite, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم three times. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم three times. Then after that, you recite, اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك. اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك. You recite that once. So inshallah, if you make a habit of doing this, Allah جل وعلا will purify your heart. and your mind from satanic whispers. Jazakumullahu khayra wa ahsanan jaza wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.